What's going on, Cliff Jumper 1984? Red Rocks, the alcoholic Autobot with that ever so beautiful Natty Ice. Yes, what a beautiful fucking beer that is. I'm trying to do a little off the wall thing. I was sitting here on Netflix watching Masters of the Universe, the Cartoon Network version of it. And it was the readaptation of, of course, the original 80 series, and it was all brand new. I just want to put my own two cents into it because I've caught up with it so late. Of course, you know, being a fan of the older stuff, I when I was younger, of course, I had to go check it out. And as much as I went back and rewatched some of the old He-Man stuff, it's not really as much as that gayness as people claim it to be. Because what they weren't really going for a lot of, I guess, harm or uh, I guess you say violence in it. So that's why He-Man threw a lot of people instead of used his sword against other people. Like he used a sword against robots or other things. Like you always seen him picking up and tossing people and stuff like that. Which I'm fine with that. I can understand certain messages in the 80s with the cartoons and everything like that. But then adapting to the new show, I overall, and just right out front, I want to say it, I like it. It definitely plays a lot more on the series, I guess, as, as in a whole in general. Characters are more developed, and certain episodes feature around a certain, you know, background character, too, which is cool. It's how Transformers did it back in the day. And when you come into people like many... Many Faces, Man at Arms, Teela. A lot of those characters had more important roles. It, well, at least it seems to me. But I'm pretty sure like they've all adapted them in certain ways. And it made them a broader character. And it became them more enjoyable as a character. And I really... Jesus Christ. Feels like every YouTube video I'm always doing, my fucking phone gets attacked. I should learn to turn it the fuck off. But I'm really... Again, with all the character distinctions, it's very good. As well, it's not just for the masters, of, you know, the masters for Grayskull, as well as Skeletor's crew and stuff. They're very more well developed too. Triclops, uh, Beastman. I, I like Beastman's aspect. How he controls more different beasts in the series. It's what he's known for. You don't see Merman a lot, at least for what I got through. I'm in the middle of season two right now. Trapjaw you don't see as much either, which is weird because he was used very, very early in the beginning of the early He-Man series. Skeletor, he puts more of its magic, I guess, in the mix, which is fine. The Twin Swords, I think, has to deal with the play of the two Power Swords that were different, which was cool. And I liked more of the backstory at the beginning of the series, where, you know, his face was melted off by the Toxic or whatever that's thrown on him. And that's pretty much all I want to say about them. And I want to get more in the Masters. Uh, King Randor, it's nice how you actually see him doing something in the series. How eventually how he became king. And he went back and fought Skeletor twice. Even though the first time he kind of lost. Man at Arms, it really takes more of his technological skills into play. Like his mace that he has that expands and the battle armor how the face shield comes up and the hand can convert into almost like a mega buster that's definitely something a little different and he-man i don't know if i like the corridine cordite cordine i forget which way it is the chest piece because it's brown i kind of liked it more of the steel stone color because of the metal it was made out of but that that's just me being nostalgic the sword itself i not bought on but i kind of like the idea because of the way other things are in grayskull how it's not it feels like it's kind of more like the dark ages but with some technological advances in it so it's cool the sword actually has like a function where the one part of the uh shaft Part spins out when Prince Adam. Uh, I don't know if you want to call it morphs or transforms, however you want to say it. That's pretty cool. I and having him as like a younger guy that's not huge as a Prince Adam. Like you know, the guy was 
Prince Adam in the original 80s series was kind of buff. And when he went to He-Man State, he stayed the same buffness. They didn't do that, and I think I like that a lot better because it's easier to depict Prince Adam from He-Man Apart. Tila was more of a role, and you got to figure, find out about Man-at-Arms being the sorceress, I guess, baby's daddy to Tila. And I, that was a little weird to me. I don't know. I just overall like the series a lot better than the original one because it's so much more of a story and people and the characters are just more like us the way you see them interact you know it's just a quick video i wanted to put my thoughts out i just can't believe i didn't see this to that late i'm not saying it's the best you know series around best cartoon anime whatever you want to say that's a nostalgic thing but it it's more enjoyable than the original series and jesus fucking christ and I want to say, actually, when I get some free time, I've actually been watching this right now. So, yeah, so where He-Man's going in the future, I don't know. They've had these the reissue, or, they're not really reissues, or like classic figures. They came out really good, I think. And, I mean, they've been out for a while. And what, at least three or four, maybe even five years. But, heck, I, there was also talks of, like, doing another Masters of the Universe movie for all the stuff that, that they could do now in the movies. That'd be pretty cool. I'm sure people will go see it. So, hey, what do you think? You ever watch an old series? What do you think about the old He-Man series? You ever check out the movie, the old live-action one with Duff Laundrin in? Heck, and what do you think about the future of He-Man? Hey, you guys want to hold me?